Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'd uh, like to bring our attention to actually this is a part of my dissertation, uh, the full dissertation. Would not, uh, I call it, would not be going to have one hour, but more than an hour when I presented that during my committee, uh, during the defense. But here, uh, the part that I'll be presenting to you will not actually affect the, the title of my dissertation and the title that I gave to this rules for this presentation. So as you could read, you have the press volatility and the responsibility in the Philippines and an autoregressive condition of heterosidastica, which is used um, in the generation of expected prices and expected price variances in order that we could be able to analyze the supply response of all of it. Um, let me introduce to you the concept of price volatility. It is an estimate of the range within which prices can vary in the future according to those authors. The matter with price volatility is, is it is associated with price risk that intensifies inflationary pressures and reduces agricultural productivity. Across the world, it continues to be a cause for concern among governments, traders, producers, and consumers. So, price volatility, price volatility is explored in poultry because um, previous studies conducted as well, like U.S. and Greece, they come out with the findings that meat markets are positive to significant price volatility. So, poultry is a meat source in the Philippines uh, is considered for the analysis of price volatility. And also, poultry is a fiber for Philippine agriculture, multi-billion in industry value, and also in estimated annual income. It also has a significant contribution to the GNP of the Philippines in gross value added, and also to the entire agricultural production of the country. So with the presence of price volatility in the economy, there is a tendency for poultry industry to have a weakened performance so because it may develop risk aversion among poultry producers and stakeholders, resulting to decision paralysis and consequently opportunity losses. With industry size and influence of poultry, uh, price volatility may also affect other markets. So the, uh, the last part of this dissertation actually talks about the impact of price volatility and uh, the effects of price volatility in other markets are being So these are the objectives to provide an overview of the poultry industry, to analyze the volatility of prices, and then incorporate the analysis of volatility in prices on the supply behavior of poultry along with some economic factors, and then the policy implications or recommendations from the findings. So, um, the conceptual framework of the study will tell us something about what is being considered in the analysis. Uh, arch approach is preferred in this study, and that is what's in the middle part of the conceptual framework. Arch is um, auto regressive conditional heteroscedastic approach, and it is the approach and economic tool that addresses biases caused by serial autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity. Serial autocorrelation means the expected value of the error term, the current error term conditional on the previous errors is not equal to zero. So that means uh, previous errors are still carried over up to this time. So that one must be corrected in the analysis of data. Otherwise, you cannot depend the findings in the, of the analysis. So another one is heteroscedasticity, that is the no constant variance. If the variance is not held constant in the normal distribution of the data, actually, I'm talking about the statistics, but um, we will be able to appreciate this, I'm sure. Um, if the variation of the data is having a wide range, you could hardly but you could hardly tell from your findings that those findings will tell you the reliable estimates because the variation is wide. So you have to limit the variation. And this approach, autoregressive conditional heteroscedastic approach, will address these biases. 
so that you can come up with corrected estimates devoid already of biases caused by these two aspects. And then it will also allow us to, to frame a supply analysis in poultry under price uncertainty because that approach has two estimating equations. One will yield the expected values of the variable that is under study and the other one is the variance, expected variance of this variable that will give the risk measure. So uh, that's the advantage of having the arch approach in this study. So you could see in the conceptual framework of the study that the factors affecting the project price movement are classified into two external and internal. External meaning outside industry, internal inside industry. And this project price movement will give us insights about the risks and uncertainties faced by poultry producers and other stakeholders that will affect the poultry supply response. By the way, uh, supply response is a technical term in economics. It is actually a supply analysis. It is a supply equation, supply function. Uh, the difference that it makes with the other supply function is that it is a behavioral aspect. Uh, it is a behavioral analysis. We say behavioral analysis, the quantity is related to the price movement. So in here, the quantity of supply in poultry products as represented by four leading poultry products in the Philippines uh, is affected by the price movements coming from the inputs, coming from the competing goods, coming from the price movement of the commodities and the crude oil price. That's the scope of the analysis. So here, in the poultry price movement, you see that it is connected to unit root test. The middle part of the diagram tells us the process through which, or the, the process that the data had to go through. So first, unit root test. Unit root test is a test for stationarity, whether the data is stationary or not. So if the data is not stationary, meaning there is unit root, then we'll have to have the first difference. And we say first difference is just the difference between two values one time period apart. And we say one time period apart. If the data is in yearly terms, it's just the difference, let's say, 2011 and 2010. If ever the data comes out again, you will test the unit root test, to be not stationary, you'll have to proceed to second difference. When we say second difference, the difference between two values, let's say measured in yearly terms, two time periods apart. So that means 2011 minus 2009. Right? So uh, stationarity of the data is a requirement for the succeeding tests. And if ever, uh, the series is already stationary. That means when you test at the first time the data series using this unit root test, whatever that is, but in this study, the ADF or method GP folder is used. <coughs> if the test rejects the hypothesis of unit root right away, then that means the series will have to remain in levels. When you say levels, actual values will have to be used. No difference. Okay, so. The vast Jenkins method to determine the order of the ARMA process, when we say ARMA, autoregressive moving average. Autoregressive meaning an independent variable is regressed for itself. It's the same as yourself now is due to who you are, who you were before. So that's the moving average is actually the error term. So the RCLM test is the next test that will have to be conducted on, uh, we have to be performed on the data series and it is going to find, it is going to tell you whether there is this arch effect or no arch effect. When we say arch effect, there are volatility clusters in the data series when graph. Okay, when graph. So if ever there are volatility clusters, that will give you the range at which these values change. Okay, so if the arch LM test will yield results um, telling us that 
arch effects or volatility clusters are present, then we'll have to proceed to proceed our estimation using arch or garch. Garch is the advanced version of arch. If ever there are no volatility clusters, and that means there are no arch effects, then we'll have to use ALIMA or other regressive integrated moving average. And then these two, the arch estimation and the ARIMA estimations will give us values on expected prices and expected price variance that we have to incorporate on the policy supply response. So the data are taken from the AS Bureau of Agricultural Statistics and the National Statistical Coordination Board. Um, they are in monthly national time series data for the prices of poultry products, live broiler, dressed chicken, chicken eggs, and duck eggs, and yellow corn, uh, pork, beef, and crude oil from 1990 to 2009, and quarterly for, national, uh, for the supply of water products. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index, also monthly from 1990 to 2009. So the analytical tools to have an overview of all three in the Philippines will just use simple descriptive statistics like the graph. And then price volatility analysis will have to conduct the unit root test. In this case, we use the augmented Dickey Fuller. The augmented Dickey Fuller is ADF, and it is used in the study because the error terms are found to be serially correlated. That means they affect each other to this time. So uh, that's why we have to use the augmented degree polar test. And then we have the arch LN test to, to know whether arch is qualified for the estimation or not. And then if qualified, we'll use arch, if not, arima. So the arch equations are shown in there, the first two equations. Um, the first equation is the expected value, the estimating equation for the expected prices. The second is the variance equation that is for the expected variances. Um, autoregressive, the term autoregressive, as you could see, there is PT in this side. You could also see PT minus I in the other side. PT minus I um, represents the lag. L A G G E D or previous values of P T. Okay, because T means current time, <coughs> P T minus I signifies the previous time periods. Okay, and then the error term because there are shocks that cannot be captured within the estimating equation. And then the variance equation. It's also an autoregressive because you could see the H in one side, in the other side, you have also the H. And then uh, in the variance, the variance equation has to take the error term, the E to I, there in the first equation, as part of the parameters in the variance equation. Because it is a variance equation. A variance is a squared residual, a squared error term. Okay. So, if you want to forecast the levels of prices in the future, you will use the first equation. If you want to know whether there is significant price volatility or there is none of that sort, use the second equation. As long as you will satisfy the assumption that the error term conditional on omega t minus 1, omega t minus 1 means previous information, using all information in the previous period, the error term will have a normal distribution with expected value of zero and constant variance. Okay, so the supply response again will have to use the ADF and then the Johansson test. The Johansson test is the test for co integration because uh, variables, economic variables, have long run relationships. But at present, we are going to analyze these variables. Shocks in the economy will alter will alter these relationships. So the true long run relationships are being obscured because of the reactions to the shocks. However, if we want to have reliable estimates, we will have to preserve the long run relationships because they, these are the true relationships. 
So we have to adjust the error term. But before adjustment, we'll have to know whether um, it is good to adjust or not good to adjust. So that's what the you had sent us was that us whether we'll have to check the estimating equation for co-integration or not. And the model that we are going to use to, to correct the estimating equation due to the influence of co-integration is the ECM. When we say ECM, error correction model, and that is being mixed or integrated in the OLS or just the regression analysis or the ordinary least squares. So we have the model that is the QPN is actually the level of supply of a poultry product. Then the D is the dummy variable for the quarter, uh, production quarters or production timing. TR is the trend component that will capture the technological changes, price changes. You know? uh, it will just it will just be happy with one, two, three, four, five, something like that in values. PPEP is what you could be able to derive from the first equation, and that is the expected price. PPCVT is representing the variance that you can derive from the second equation, and that is the risk measure. And the risk measure will tell us the volatility, whether time value or constant. And then PSPT is the price of pork, PSBT is the price of beef, uh, PCOPT is the price of crude oil, PYCT is the price of yellow corn, QPTI again is the lab production or the previous production level. So that one is an autoregressive model because you could see the QP in the others in this side and then the QP also on the other side. Okay? Then the error correction is what you can see second from the last. The term second from second to the last is the error correction. And this model is being able to have this error correction, that is where ACM comes in, or error correction model comes in. And then AP or the error term. Okay? So variables are immature love and difference forms. Uh, this is the result, the overview of poultry. Region 3 must be the poultry capital of the Philippines. And the three major islands of the Philippines are represented in the production of chicken, duck, chicken egg, and duck eggs. And this is the quarterly production of the leading poultry products in the Philippines. Uh, gently rising, the chicken products. But the that product, as you can see, all of them are also declining gently, not steeply. Okay, the chicken and duck importation, the chicken importation is, right, is rising, but the duck importation is fluctuating, but actually in the later part, from 2000, it's going down, it has a trend going down. The chicken eggs and duck eggs, in terms of imports, you could see that the duck egg, ah no, the chicken eggs, after the beginning of 1999, it has a rising trend, increasing trend. But the duck eggs going down until zero in the recent period. The best chicken utilization in the Philippines have the export and for, for food. Export for export market is rising. And then for food, it's also rising. Duck utilization, mostly food. And it has also an, a rising trend. And then the utilization of chicken eggs in the Philippines, all hatchery processing and food have rising patterns. But the duck eggs um, rising and then a little bit sustained and then going down. Okay. Now this is the result for augmented decoder test. When we tested the monthly real prices of live broiler, dressed chicken, chicken eggs, duck eggs, pork, and beef for stationary. Uh, since in L, L means level, F D means first reference, S D is second reference. In L, in actual values, 
the null hypothesis of non stationarity at 5% level of significance is accepted. That's why there is no asterisk. So that means in actual values, uh, the data of these commodities in real price and in monthly terms are not stationary. So we have to take the first difference, and since you could see stars, right, the asterisk, and that already indicates the rejection of the non hypothesis of non stationarity of the data series. So we could use either first difference or second difference in further testing. This is the ArchLM test for these commodities. Uh, using the real prices of chicken, broiler, and dress, real prices of chicken eggs and duck eggs. Uh, one thing of determining the level of significance is you have to look at the probability values. Uh, in, our, in, in this case, in this study, it should be less than 10%, so 0.1, less than 0.1. If greater than 0.1, that is not any more significant. Less than 0.1 significance. So that means only the real price of live broiler has no uh, significant, is not significant for arch effects. So the kind of volatility existing in live broiler is constant. Okay? So for the rest, dress chicken, chicken eggs, and duck eggs, time varying price volatility. So it varies with time. That's why the Arch has C standing for conditional. It's conditional with time. In other words, it varies. The volatility varies with time. That's what's meant by that. So in here, the estimation of expected prices and expected price variances for light broiler should use the ARIMA approach, not the ARCH approach, because only the dressed chicken, chicken eggs, and duck eggs must be estimated through ARCH. Okay? So this is the ARIMA estimation. We will not be going to interpret the coefficients of these results as how we interpret the coefficients in OLS or in the regression, because this will just show that the components of ARIMA equation for broiler chicken price volatility and expected price estimation should have a constant, uh, an autoregressive of order one, and a moving average or error term plug by one. Um, and then this is the arch results for price volatility of dark eggs. And the, there are two sets of results, the upper set of results. Um, corresponds to the expected, expected prices. The first equation that I just showed to you. The second one is the variance equation. The first equation refers to the expected price. That means that the price change, because we are uh, using the first difference, it means change, it's because it's first difference. So the previous price change has a negative influence on the current price change because it is negative design. Okay? And then in the various equations, since the square residual is highly significant, less than 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1, and that means there is this significant price volatility. However, the price volatility existing for this commodity is shorter because there is just only one squared residual, love by one month, because negative one, as you can see, received, but in this is negative one, and that means the previous month. And there are no others, so do not persist. So this is the arch results for price volatility of dressed chicken, that the dressed chicken expected prices are affected by the price changes not by one month, or one month ago, and two months ago, okay? And then the squared, uh, in the various equation, the squared residual is again highly significant, and that means there is this um, price volatility that is significant but short term. In chicken eggs, it's also the same, it's a good notice. However, in the various equation, there are already 
there are two uh, squared residuals. But when we are going to know whether it's short term or it is persistent, we are going to take the value of the coefficients, whether the first coefficient or log by one month is greater than log by two months. If it is, then it is still short term. If it, the second one is greater than a little bit longer compared to the uh, price volatility uh, of other commodities. So this is the ADF test result for stationarity of variables included in poultry supply response models. Still the same, we are to look whether uh, to look for the significant values. The significant values are those with stars or asterisks. Um, they represent the projection of the null hypothesis that the data are not stationary. So this is the co-integration test. This will tell us whether co-integrating relationships, through co-integrating relationships are being obscured or not. So that is indicated by the asterisks. If the asterisks are found in the in the figures, then that means there is this co-integrating uh, relationships. I mean, co-integration is present among the variables in the model and we'll have to check for or adjust the error term. So having the adjustments for error term, you have to expect the error correction factor in the regression result, the OLS. This is now an ECM OLS model and you should expect that the error correction is significant. Okay? So, here, in this result, uh, production timing is significant. That means the chicken producers take note of production timing. This is the seasonality of production, in other words. So, why you, you cannot be able to see quarter one in the results? Quarter one is the base period here. And quarters two, three, and four should be interpreted because they are all dummy variables. And this should be interpreted as quarter two is significantly lower than quarter one. Quarter three is significantly higher than quarter one, also quarter four. Okay, so we could be able to, if that is the case, if this is quarter one, lower, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, so there is this pattern. Okay? So the not expected milk price of just chicken, even if it is not significant, it has an economic meaning, and that means um, the chicken producers responsible for having distressed chicken product in the market are not using expected prices in making decisions and in their production enterprises. What's the implication of this one? Um, the planning horizon is short. They react immediately to current prices. They base their decisions, production decisions, to current prices. And that being short means you could hardly integrate long-term plans of, let's say, expansion, diversification, or anything that is bigger for improvement. Because all these things would not, would not be easily uh, planned about because they entail so much cost. So expected prices are very important in longer planning horizons. In this case, the chicken producers are not using the uh, expected prices. And expected price variance of just chicken, as you could see, is also mm -hmm. insignificant, and that's good news. That means uh, even if there is significant price volatility, it hardly affects the supply of chicken because it's not significant. However, the negative coefficient of expected price there is addressed chicken, negative 0.3802, means the chicken producers are discovers. They are not risk takers. Because increase in risk, increase in the level of risk would decrease the or would discourage 
any increase in the supply of children. That's the meaning of that one. Family price support and also the being insignificant means any news, bad news, bad shocks coming from pork and beef markets do not affect chicken. So it means it's the chicken industry is quite strong. And then the number price of diesel, as you could notice, is still insignificant. All price hike is not um, able to affect supply and deliver all day. And then yellow corn as an input is also insignificant. R squared means 96 or 97 percent in the variation of supply response of chicken can be explained by the variables in the model. You will, uh, we will also be explaining the same in here. As you could notice for chicken for live broiler production, production timing is still significant. So that means they take note of seasonality in production. The not expected real price here is still insignificant. That means they're still using current prices. Expected price varies of live broiler, however, is significant. And that means they recognize the level of uh, price uncertainty in the supply of chicken for live broiler. So they see the risk. And the matter with this one is the chicken producers for live broiler are risk averse. They are not risk takers because it's negative. Okay? And then shocks coming from pork and beef markets could not affect the supply behavior of chicken for live broiler. And then also the diesel. Uh, the yellow corn. The error correction in here being insignificant means we really are justified in the use of the error corrected models in the OLS estimation because of the significant feedback mechanisms that would, uh, that would obscure the two long run relationships. In other words, the shocks have effects on the supply of chicken for live broiler. So, 97% of the variation in supply response for chicken can be explained by the variables in the product. So the same with chicken eggs. Production timing is significant. Long expected real price of chicken egg is now significant. And that means they have long-term plans. Uh, chicken egg producers have long-term plans. They use expected prices. And then the Price volatility is also significant and will negatively affect the supply response of chicken egg. And then the shocks coming from pork and beef markets, including diesel, will not affect the supply response of chicken eggs. And yellow corn, increase in the price of yellow corn would dampen the increase in the supply of chicken eggs, okay? because it is negative. And then previous production levels will also have effects, has a, uh, previous production levels have positive influence on current chicken eggs production. So the supply response estimation for duck eggs we have here, the Quarter two and four are uh, significantly higher than quarter one. Quarter three is not significantly higher. That means they are very close, or they make the difference is not significant. In here, um, the not expected real price of duck eggs is insignificant. That means the duck egg producers do not use expected prices or expectations for their plants in uh, for their enterprises, enterprise plants, or production plants. The expected price variance of duck egg in here is positively signed. That means uh, had there been a significant, even if uh, risk becomes significant in duck egg production, the duck egg producers will take that because it is significant. And another one, shocks from pork, beef, uh, diesel, including yellow corn, 
are not significant, not capable to affect the severe response of doctors. Error correction signifies the presence of feedback mechanisms in the market that can alter their behavior or response to the shocks. And then the dot, dot end production means previous production levels of production performance can affect current performance. So 95% of the variation, the supply response of dark egg can be explained by these variables in the model. For conclusions, poultry is an important industry in the Philippines given those facts and is a potentially strong catalyst of enterprise and economic development. Short-term time varying price volatility is present in the leading poultry products of the country. And you have price volatility can affect negatively the supply of chicken eggs and the boiler. Supply response analysis, as I have just shown you, uh, under price uncertainty has implications on the behavior of the poultry producers towards use of expectations in planning and decision making, and also towards risks. So, for policy implications and recommendations, having this price uncertainty in the market of poultry in the Philippines, upgrading information networks capability and service is very important. Customizing the content and services is not all poultry producers can understand English or what language. Not all of the poultry producers can also understand the trends, some data, so there must be some uh, added services for that. Uh, matter. Improvement of market coordination and hedging options because as you can notice, there is an um, increasing importation also, but also an increasing exportation of dressed chicken in the country. Okay? So that can be explained. Uh, increasing importation can be explained by just citing the increasing demand, but increasing importation um, it's not an appropriate occurrence in all three supposedly, but it can be possible because we have business freedom in the Philippines. We can transact business with any enterprise or any businesses here and there. So that can be possible. Establishment of a monitoring system for price volatility and spillovers. Improving statistical agencies, data collection and organization in online databases. Because the matter with this study is um, we met a problem in the data analysis because the price volatility is being averaged. So the spikes could be, I mean, are hidden because of the need to average. Because the price volatility must be in monthly terms not in quarterly terms, but we have to adjust the price volatility to be in quarterly terms so that there will be consistency in the analysis because the available supply data are in quarterly terms. So we could hardly find a complete series of supply data in monthly terms, so we just use the um, quarterly. Improvement of extension work for the transmission of relevant market information to those who have less access to online databases in support for increased access to interconnected information systems. Further market research pertaining to price asymmetry, market power, factors, and changes of price volatility with the use of advanced GARCH models uh, is also recommended and research to improve quality leads. And I'd like to acknowledge CERCA for the support um, my advisor, Dr. Jose M. Yorobe, and my committee members, Dr. Latikan, uh, Dr. Sumadi, Dr. Terelia, and the one, the economic, econometricians who helped analyze the data from Social Science Division of ERI, Ms. Hilar and Mr. Valera. Thank you. Thank you very much. invite the audience to use the microphone over here uh, to direct your questions or your comments regarding uh, Dr. Balanay's uh, presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, 
Ada apa? Uh, I'm Dal Samsudewa. I'm uh, majority dari work saya, ya. Minority in white life studies. I'm Sarkar Scholar. Uh, I want, I'm really interested with this title because it's really helpful for, especially for my, for my subject because I'm a minority scientist. Uh, but uh, I want to ask two questions. Well, the first is about the data that you use. Uh, that uh, you inform to us, you use the data from the statistic view of the agricultural statistics. Uh, are you are you really confident with your data? Because as I know, some of them of the view of the agricultural statistic and the it's always used as trend data. Only the trend population trend uh, report and the and the second. Uh, the uh, about the, uh, did you use the primary data also? I mean, there's like uh, uh, you make a survey to some place that really will be support your results because if you only uh, using secondary data, as I know, it will not be it will not be really give the information about what happened and why the data is happened. To you. The second question about the last conclusion about the increasing of the of the poultry breed. Uh, during your recommend, uh, during your discussion, I didn't see uh, some discussion about the uh, problem in poultry breed. But unfortunately, in the conclusion, you give about the increasing of the poultry breed. Maybe I can get uh, some reason why you give the conclusion. Thank you. Okay, I will answer the first question. Um, I'm confident of the data. And I know that there are issues uh, pertaining to the reliability of the data, not only in the Philippines but also abroad. But since the Bureau of Agricultural Statistics is the official agency for agricultural data, I have no choice but to take the data. Okay? Uh, actually, I have no choice but to take the data. Okay? I really have to, to use the data coming from agricultural statistics. Other agencies, uh, I would be questioned because they don't have that many things. And I cannot choose the primary data because this is nationwide. So as important, that's why, I, as you could notice, the factors considered are just representative of certain markets. The markets for the competing products, the representative market for input, um, the crude price is part, the market of the commodity itself could not take on. And I'm just um, confident with the error term that will just absorb all the shocks coming from other sources. Yes. Ah, uh, the research for superior breeds actually is not. It's not um, we could not just say an uh, increase in poultry, something like that, because we need also to base that decision to the demand situation. Um, but it is here in my, it's being implied, you no? Know? Uh, I cannot finish everything. So I have some recommendations for others also to make follow-up studies, but that second question has something to do with this. The live broiler having a negative coefficient, risk averse, and also chicken egg, risk averse as well. And the matter with this risk aversion is it is, is, it is significant. And it is perhaps due to the nature of the product being produced by the producers, the chicken eggs, could not be stored for a long time. It will be stored, right? Even if you will put the eggs inside the refrigerator for three months or four months, you will not anymore like to consume the eggs if it's for that long. And then live broiler, the live broiler, you could notice the risk aversion is significant mainly because of the nature of live broiler. If refrigerating a live broiler is um, ridiculous, <laughs> right? You will not 
could show a live boiler when at first glance it looks sickly. So the, the problem with this, why there is this risk aversion? Because these products are sensitive to quality changes. So being sensitive to quality changes, risk may be because of that. So we need to have this bridge that can at least maintain the desired quality changes of these products. Uh, I am not saying it should be increased, no? But the quality, because Usually, the marketability of the product is due to the quality of the product. Any more questions from our audience? Yes, Dr. Verda. I am not an accountant. Uh, on a practical basis, if I am just a consumer, how would the, the DTI who post the prices of chicken or chicken or other agricultural drugs to affect the Price, the pricing that we have for in the market. The, okay. DTI uh, cost in the television daily prices of chicken, pork, and other vegetables. What I'm saying is that uh, uh, how does that affect the uh, the market price of chicken being brought by the uh, user? Does that affect the forecast of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Does and how does that, that relate to the art? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if the prices are available, it depends. Um, if I am a producer of a product, and if I am thinking of improving my enterprise and my business about production of that product, then we can be using the immediate price, but I will be using a longer uh, price data set. Let's say, for instance, I have to I have to take the trend. I have to take the trend because I need to consider uh, in my decisions the expectation about the future of that product. Uh, before you go on, uh, would you know how DTI comes up? Their uh, their forecast uh, for the prices of say chicken. I have not investigated in that aspect. I'm very sorry for that one, but I know that they got that information from us because other other agencies should not. Uh, I don't know, but it's an issue. But the price data, according to my, I mean, according to my friends coming from Vegas, are dependable, and I know that agencies like in SO, agencies like uh, DDI get data from Vegas. Any more questions from our audience? Yes, sir. I thought you were raising your hand. Any more questions from our audience? Yes, from. Uh, maybe after this, if you want to discuss with me, <laughs> because I really didn't get uh, some reason like you said about the light boiler. Can I ask what 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 do you mean about light boiler? The, the light boiler. The already slaughtering of people. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. The consumer will have to yes. Before slaughtering. Yes. So you have a reason that uh, light boiler. Have a price, high price volatility like that? Yes. Because of they cannot longer to. Um, they are sensitive to quality changes. Uh, I do, I'm not sure, but as I know, my experience during I have I worked in technical service of Charun of an industry is broiler chicken. The reason why the price volatility in the chicken live broiler, it's not about the longer time they will. Uh, they will uh, raise it, maybe up to 28, 35, 42. But the reason is about the uh, supply of the day or chicken, supply of the fluid meal, supply of the antibiotic that use. The price of from the supply, it will be affected to the price volatility. <coughs> so, uh, actually, the reason not about the not about the longer of the raising. 
as I know. But the reason is, as I know, is about the, uh, like this. Uh, the farmer will be really know that if I uh, like in Indonesia sample or in here during the Christmas, during the Christmas, 45 or uh, 30 up to 45 days before Christmas. They will uh, get the price of the chicken higher. Uh, the old chicken higher because they will sell the chicken during the Christmas. But in the like uh, June, when the uh, student will come to the school, so they will not. Uh, they will get the price of chicken thirty up to forty five before raising is lower. Why? Because of no, so not so many farmers will be. Uh, not so many consumers will be buy the chicken during the June. Why? Because of they need to send their children to the school. That's some reason that why the uh, price volatility in the broiler is really cannot uncontrollable. So maybe we can discuss later uh, some more of the discussion. Because I really, I really feel that uh, up to now, I sometimes I cannot catch the reason why the price volatility is happened like that. So I'm sorry I've not yet, not yet read all of your manuscripts, that's why I, I didn't know about the reason. But maybe I can, I can uh, even if already finished, maybe for the future, I can help to contribute for that. Thank you. Uh, and uh, the last question, is it in Philippines have the one bureau or one uh, organization that control of the price or not? Because if, like in Indonesia, they have, and it's really, helpful for the, especially for chicken egg. But for the chicken broiler, we cannot control anything because they really high volatility of the price because of so many uh, company farm that really making the price is very bad. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, this one is like this. Um, yeah, and you are, to, uh, you, you are correct when it comes to the sources of factors for price volatility. But I'm not saying that uh, I'm not saying that these factors can indeed, I mean, they have these effects. It, they are considered, especially when you have regularly, when you have regular production, that's already expected, uh, the price is something, something like that. They actually, I, I don't know if they vary so much, but um, when it comes to risk aversion, when you handle your products, okay, during marketing, the time consideration in the release of your products has effects on the quality of the products, especially if you are dealing with live products, right? Yeah. Because they could have it stored. Unlike dressed chicken, you can store, you can refrigerate, but like water, you cannot. It's very irrelevant. And the transport of these products from, from the production area, not in good transport systems, right? So the, you know, the bumpy roads, I don't think the uh, river will be coming like that, no? So by the time they reach the market, there is some stress. Mortality. Yes, sometimes mortality, and that's what I mean by that, uh, the meaning of that result. And another one, I forget the other one. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, um, I forget the other one. What is that? Uh, organization. organization. Ah, here. This is, if that happens, this study should not use ARCH in the first place. Why? This will only be true when the prices are not controlled by the government, like price stabilization, stabilization policies. This, the findings of this can be used in pursuing the drafting of price stabilization policies, but you know what? Uh, there are distorting effects. When you are going to control the prices of one market, this, this will have spillovers in the economy. That may not be efficient, uh, that may not be welfare um, advantages with our welfare. So this is uh, the study we're in the prices are not being controlled deliberately. Okay. 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 Okay.
In the 1950s, then there were no proofs in Chile, right? So your study is uh, from this time of when? 1992. 1992. So that means that uh, there were no, uh, there were only proofs in Chile. The reason I'm asking you about this is that before 1960s, Magnolia was trying, uh, was having a hard time selling or making customers accept frozen chicken. Okay, my question is, about the frozen chicken has stabilized also the uh, selling price of the live chicken? Because that used to be the normal one, and also in the rural areas where you have the, uh, where the uh, multinational chicken uh, uh, company cannot uh, sell the frozen chicken. So, does uh, the frozen chicken stabilize the sale of live chicken? Does the frozen chicken stabilize the sale of the live chicken? Yeah, because uh, there is still market for live chicken or live broiler. Yeah. <coughs> I have not yet investigated to that level okay. whether that one has really stabilized. I couldn't say because this study is not saying something about it. Uh, I would be in hot water if ever I say something about it. <laughs> because you, you, even at the table number 10, live broiler price. Yeah, it is based on the live broiler price. Yeah. And uh, what is just shown in here is the use of expected price in planning yeah. and the price volatility. In here... No, but uh, you didn't have... The dress I don't chicken. know if uh, you have uh, the dress or frozen chicken uh, table like that. The dress chicken. Yeah, yeah. The dress chicken secret of this, the expected price variance is insignificant. <coughs> so where do you have a more stable uh, uh, price of poultry? In the uh, cities where you have the uh, supermarkets with the uh, frozen facilities? Or uh, what will well be? What will be, be the pricing of chicken in uh, rural areas where we do not have to be I have not investigated the, the, you know, in detail, the pricing of chicken in the sense. But I know uh, the cost, it could be the cost basis. But I don't know how much is for the profit or how much is what is the pricing scheme used in those areas. I have not gone to that level. So can we give Dr. Banana another round?